Hi, and welcome to the Module 1, Section 5 uh, lesson. This is on simple and compound discounts. So this is stuff that you probably have not seen before. Uh, the simple and compound interest earlier you've seen, I'm sure, but uh, we're, we're tweaking things up a little bit here. So this, is this should be new stuff to you. Uh, let's go back to where we were calculating the amount of interest as a principal times rate times time. That's not going to change. Uh, the amount of interest is still the same formula. And actually, when we talk about discounts, uh, the amount of discount is going to be the same formula also, principal times rate times time. So now the difference between when you see an interest problem versus a discount problem for instance, when you're given an interest rate in your problem versus given a discount rate in your problem, the difference is here, that interest is paid at the end of the period based on the amount of money or the principal at the beginning of the period. Whereas discount is paid at the beginning of, at the, beginning of the period based on uh, the amount of principal or about amount of money at the end of the period. So uh, that might be kind of confusing. So let's do an example. Uh, uh, once again, the amounts are calculated the same way. The amount of interest and the amount of discount is going to be calculated the same way. So let's look at this example uh, to try to help illustrate the difference between an interest versus a discount. Suppose you have $100 and 100 is borrowed uh, for one year at a 6% annual effective rate. Compare the timelines based on whether the rate is an interest rate or a discount rate. So I could have a 6% annual effective interest rate or a 6% annual effective discount rate. Uh, so when you say the word rate, I mean, it's kind of ambiguous. You need some adjectives to back that up. And so in this case, it's the, the period, the annual, it's an effective. And now I need another adjective. Is, is it a interest rate or a discount rate? So let's start with uh, an interest rate. Let's say that the I is 6%. Uh, it, it, the 6% the, the is an interest rate, so I'll use an I uh, to denote that. So an I is a 6% annual effective interest rate, then the amount of interest for that one year period will be principal times rate times time. It's 100 times 0.06 times 1, which is 6. So my timeline would look like this. I borrow $100 at time 0, and then at time 1, I'm going to have to pay back the $100 plus the interest, $6. So I'm going to have to pay back $106. On the other hand, now let's think about the 6% the as being a discount rate. So I'll use a D. Let's say D is 0.06. It's an annual effective discount rate. I calculate the amount of, uh, the amount of discount the same way. It's still, it's still like an, an interest. The interest amounts and discount amounts are going to be calculated exactly the same way. So the discount amount is, once again, 100 times 0.06 times 1 or 6. But this time, when I'm borrowing the money, my timeline's going to look like this. At time zero, uh, well, I'll come back to the time zero. I'm going to pay back the 100. I'll pay back the principal at time one. But this time, I'm paying the interest in advance. And so the $6 is going to be paid in advance. And I can think, about, think of that as being taken off of the $100 that's being borrowed. Uh, so in, in fact, I'm, not, I'm only actually getting $94, the 100 minus the amount of discount, 6 uh, is is 94. So look at this look at this uh, slide again. Let's 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 let me point out a couple of things on this slide. The six uh, the I, cap I equals six in the in the top timeline. The interest amount being six is uh, the the rate is six percent. The time is one one year. Now that's going to be true in both both cases. But the principal amount is at the beginning of the period. The principal is 100. It's at the beginning of the period. And the interest is being paid back at the end of the period. Now, with the discount rate, the principal, you see, shows up at the end of the period at time 1. The 100 is showing up at time 1. That's what's being paid back at time 1. And then the, um, uh, the interest is being paid at the beginning of the period. So going back to my, my original uh, description here, the differences between an interest versus a discount, interest is paid at the end of the period based on the principal at the beginning of the period. Discount is paid at the beginning of the period based on the principal at the end of the period. Okay, so now let me, let me go through a quick reminder of, of the simple interest accumulation function with the goal in mind of finding what the simple discount accumulation function would be. But let me just remind you this, this quick reminder of the simple interest interest accumulation function. The timeline is on, on, the, on the slide there. And so at time zero, I have this amount, cap A of zero. And then at time T, I have an amount, cap A of T. And I want to uh, kind of relate those two values. If I is a simple interest rate, then the amount of interest over that T year period there, my timeline is in years because it's a simple interest. So I need to use a year's timeline. 
so the amount of interest over that t-year period would be principal times rate times time. The amount of principal is the beginning of year amount, cap A of zero times, uh, times the, the interest rate I, and then times t. So the amount that I have at time t would be the amount I have at time zero plus the interest that I have over that period. And when I plug in for cap I, the, the, the expression in the previous uh, line there, both, exp both terms then would have a cap A of zero. I have a cap A of zero plus this other expression. Factor out the cap A of zero, and I would have that cap A of t is going to be cap A of zero times one plus i times t. I'm going to uh, clean it up here by deleting the, the middle expression here. Cap A of t is, uh, again, all, all I did was delete the, the middle expression. Um, and, and then this is going to imply then by plugging in a one, if I had a one at time zero, uh, uh, that means cap A of zero is a one, then the resulting expression is giving me the accumulation function. So cap, a, I'm sorry, so A of T, the accumulation function A of T is gonna be one plus I times T. So again, remember the, the goal in mind here is to try to get a simple discount accumulation function. So let's talk about that. The first thing that I'm gonna do is reverse the, the direction of the arrow, and you'll see why in, in just a second. So now let's let D be a simple discount rate. Well, when I calculate the amount of discount, so that's capital D, uh, it will be principal times rate times time. Remember the principal is at the end of the period, so the principal is gonna be the cap A of T value, and then the disc times the discount rate D, and then times times time. And then the, the relationship between the cap A of zero and the cap A of T is gonna be the cap A of zero will be cap A of T minus the amount of discount. So I gotta subtract the amount of discount. And again, plugging in uh, the expression cap A of T times D times T in the previous line, for D in the last expression there, and then factoring out a cap A of T, we would end up with cap A of zero is a cap A of T times one minus DT. I'm gonna clean it up by deleting the middle expression again. And now plug in a one for cap A of zero, and when you do that, you're, you're, you're actually, that's, you're getting then a, an, an, an accumulation function, A of T, not cap A of T, not the amount function, but the accumulation function. So plug in a one for A of T and I will get one is equal, I'm sorry, a one for cap A of zero, uh, the time zero value, and I get one equals, uh, so let me go back. I'm plugging in a one for cap A of zero, and then the result of doing that, would I would, I would substitute a a of t for the cap a of t and so i get this expression and when i solve for a of t i get a of t is one minus d times t uh, or a of t would be one over a one minus d times t which is the same as uh, the reciprocal of one minus uh, d times t so i wrote it with this negative exponent here so that's the punchline. that's what i want you to uh, or that's what we'll we'll remember and again i'll come back uh in a summary i'll come back to that statement in just a second that was a simple discount accumulation function so now let's move on to compounding uh discount and so the, uh, in order to do that, I want to remind you of the compound, quickly kind of remind you of the compound interest accumulation function and how it was derived. So if I is a periodic EIR, so I changed my timeline to periods then, then uh, cap A of one, the amount that I have at time one will be the amount at time zero accumulated by multiplying by the periodic accumulation factor. And the periodic accumulation factor is a one plus I, where I is the periodic um, effective interest rate. Likewise, to accumulate the cap A of one value to a cap A of two value, I would have uh, I'd have this relationship, cap A of two is cap A of one times one plus I. And then substituting in the first equation into the second equation, I see that cap A of two is a, one, is a cap A of zero times one plus I squared. And then this would imply, you know, we could plug in a one for, uh, for cap A of zero. So if I have a one at time zero, then that's giving me an, an A of two as one plus i squared, and generally a of t would be one plus i to the t. So that's kind of a quick um, derivation of how we got the compound interest accumulation function. So now let's talk about the compound discount accumulation function. Once again, the first thing I'm going to do is reverse the arrows because it's easier for me to relate these cap a values uh, to, to one another. Uh, I'm going to use d as the periodic effective discount rate, so the periodic EDR. And so I could get the cap A of one value from the cap A of two value by subtracting the amount of discount over the, the time uh, period from one to two. So uh, the cap A of one value would be the cap A of two value minus the cap D sub two here. And, and uh, cap D sub two for that one, uh, one period 
uh, amount of discount. Remember, it's principal times rate times time. I'm saying the time is one here. The rate is D, and the principal shows up at the end of the period. So it's a, a cap A of two. So the cap D sub two value using principal times rate times time will be cap A of two times D. Factor out a cap A of two, and I get cap A of two times a one minus D, and I'm going to clean it up by deleting the stuff in the middle here, and I get cap A of one is cap A of two times a one minus D. Likewise, I could do the exact same thing uh, to compare the cap A of zero with the cap A of one value, and I would get that uh, cap A of zero as a cap A of one times one minus D. Substitute the first equation into the second equation. For instance, in that second equation, the cap A of one value, I'm going to substitute in a cap A of two times one minus D, and I'll see that the cap A of zero value is going to be cap A of two times one minus uh, D squared, and then just replacing Instead of a 2, I could have done this for any value t. So uh, generally, cap A of 0 is going to be cap A of t times a 1 minus d to the t uh, power. Again, I, just subs I went from uh, a, a value of a 2 to just a general t value there. When I plug in a 1 for cap A of 0, that's giving me the, uh, you know, then I would substitute in an A of t for the cap A of t, and I would get a, uh, an expression or an equation, I'm sorry, that looks like this. And then solving for A of t, I would get that A of t is going to be 1 minus a d uh, raised to the minus t power. 1 over a 1 minus d to the t, which is 1 minus d to the minus t, the reciprocal of 1 minus d. Okay, so now let's look at a summary. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just for completeness, put in uh, the, the stuff we've already done with simple and compound interest. Um, so when I is a simple interest rate, time is going to be measured in years. The accumulation function, A of T, is 1 plus I times T, and you cannot use V notation. When I is a periodic effective interest rate, that's implying that you're compounding there. The time is going to be measured in the same periods as the periodic EIR. The accumulation function is 1 plus I to the T. I have uh, the periodic discount factor then is going to be a V. That's, we can use V notation. V is the periodic discount factor. It's the reciprocal of 1 plus I or 1 plus I to the minus 1. And the periodic accumulation factor is the reciprocal of V, reciprocal of periodic discount factor. So it's just a 1 plus I. Stuff we've already done. So now let's uh, look, let's extend this to simple and, and compound uh, discounts, uh, discount rates now. So with a simple discount rate, time again is measured in years. Uh, we saw a little bit earlier in this video that a of t, the accumulation function, is the reciprocal of 1 minus d times t. One minus, in other words, 1 minus d times t to the minus 1. And we cannot, just as with simple interest rates, we're not going to be able to use V notation when we have a simple discount rate. So anytime you have a simple rate, whether it's interest or discount, don't even try to use V notation. You're just not, uh, you're not going to be able to use it. Uh, on the other hand, if d is a periodic effective discount rate, Periodic effective discount rate implies I'm, I'm compounding. Uh, the time is measured in periods here. We just saw uh, a little while ago in the learning video, or in this video, that A of T, the accumulation function, is a one minus d to the minus t power. In this case, we can use uh, we can use V notation. The uh, periodic discount factor V in this case is going to be a one minus d. It's just one minus d. I'll leave that to you. To, you can, uh, as an exercise, show that the periodic discount factor that you can use V notation, and the periodic discount factor is going to be one minus d, regardless of what one period that you're uh, discounting over. And then the periodic accumulation factor, of course, is the reciprocal of V, so it would be a 1 minus D to the, to the minus 1. I want to warn you here, and fi in finishing up this video, let me warn you that, uh, take, take this note, uh, the terminology discount rate takes on this meaning that we're talking about here only on actuarial exams. That's the only time that you're going to see uh, or that you would use discount rates in this context. So, for instance, this is very important. If you're taking a, a university class like right now, like in finance or economics or something like that, and they, tell, and they say something about, well, use a discount rate of 6%. What they really are, are implying there is that you're, you're doing some sort of discounting of an amount from one time period back in time to another time period, and they want you to use this interest rate of 6% to do that discount. So when in a class, uh, or, or even, even in practice with talking with other actuaries, when you're, not on, when you're not talking about, or when you're not on an actuarial exam, but when you're in, in, in your, your real work, your practical work, 
uh, and an actuary says use a discount rate of 6%, they really mean, I'll highlight it here on the summary, they really mean to use the 6% as a, uh, as a periodic effective interest rate. Of course, they'll have to give you some more information, some more adjectives to describe the rate. But they might use, say, use a, um, uh, an annual uh, discount rate of 6%. What they mean by that is use an annual effective interest rate of 6% to discount whatever values that you're, you're actually discounting. So, uh, you know, as, as, as Willie Nelson would say, you know, they ain't wrong. They're just different. So don't, don't, uh, don't, don't think you're smarter than them. Don't think they're wrong and you're right. You know, it's not, that's not the situation. Uh, it's just that's, uh, that's the terminology that's used in practice and that's the terminology used in, in finance courses and, and other courses. Now, if you're on an actuarial exam, anytime you're on an actuarial exam and they talk about discount rate, let me, re let me highlight what they mean. And with they talk about a discount rate on an actuarial exam in a, in a context of compounding, they mean what's in red here, that you're using the, the D value, um, uh, the, you're using the, the expressions, you know, the accumulation function is a one minus whatever that, that periodic effective discount rate is to the minus T power. The periodic discount factor is a one minus D and so forth. So for instance, let, let me finish it up. I'll, uh, I'll finish it up with this example. If you're in a finance class and they tell you use a discount rate of 6%, what they mean by that, let me go back, what they mean by that is to use a, uh, let's say they use, say, use an annual effective, use a discount rate, an annual discount rate of 6%. Then let's look at the V, the v value. The V value in a finance course, if they say use a, uh, uh, an annual discount rate of 6% in a compounding context, the V value in that case is 1 over 1.06. On an actuarial exam, if they say use a discount, annual discount rate of 6%, we're in this context, uh, uh, compounding context, then the V value is 1 minus 0 0.06 or 0.94. So it's a difference, there's a difference between a 1 over 1.06 and a uh, 1 minus 0 0.06 or 0.94. Okay, so just be careful with that outside of actuarial exams. Uh, or, you know, you use it in, in, in use, use the disc term discount rate as an, uh, as an interest rate to discount values, but on actuarial exams, we're going to use it this way. So for, for the remainder of this course and uh, in future actuarial exams, you're going to see a discount rates all the time, and especially on uh, this exam and, and on some future actuarial exams, uh, use it in this context that we just talked about uh, in what's in red on the screen there. Okay, so uh, that was your warning. Um, uh, so I will see you in the next video.